Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. It's another beautiful day here in the springtime at Hinokicho Park by Tokyo Midtown. Uh, it's very warm today, uh, 25 degrees Celsius and for the first day this season I am uh, wearing shorts. Uh, I prefer to wear shorts if I have to wear anything at all and it's nice to be able to take these out of the closet and put them back on again. It looks a little bit uh, cool and shady today but it's actually very warm and sunny. Uh, the trees are now full of leaves, so I have a nice shady place to sit and make a video. Uh, the park is really, really busy today. Everyone is here uh, for a few reasons. Uh, the first is the obvious reason. Uh, the virus breakout, everything else is closed. So uh, parks are kind of a place of uh, as last resort to go out. And though you might think that people should uh, stay home as much as possible right now, uh, you probably haven't seen your typical Japanese house or apartment, uh, which tends to be quite small. So if you're a, a Japanese family with a husband and wife a, and a two kids and you're in a, say, a 70 square meter uh, apartment, uh, you're probably going to go a little stir crazy after a little while. So you really have to get out and, and enjoy a little bit of space. Another reason that the park is busy today is now we are in Golden Week in Japan, which is the, the biggest uh, travel and holiday season of the year. Uh, your average Japanese works a lot of hours and doesn't get a lot of days off. They work five days a week and seldom work on uh, six days or on weekends, but uh, usually 10 or sometimes 12 hours a day. And uh, vacations are normally limited to five consecutive days off per year. And if you are a, a parent who has children who are in school, uh, you have to figure at least a few of those vacation periods are going to be used helping your kids study for exams. Uh, in Japan, uh, sending your kid to a public school isn't as simple as taking them to the public school and enrolling them. They have to pass an entrance exam. So there's an entrance exam for kindergarten, for elementary school, for junior high school, and high school. And not all public schools and private schools are the same here. Some are better than others. So if you want to get, to get your kid into a really good uh, kindergarten, which will get them into a good elementary school, which should get them into a good junior high school and high school, they have to pass a rather difficult entrance exam. So parents here uh, uh, spend a lot of their holidays helping their kids to study. So uh, kind of a uh, silly thing, but uh, that's the way it is. So since you can't really use your normal vacation times for holiday and travel, uh, people really look forward to Golden Week every year. Uh, depending on how the holidays are laid out, uh, sometimes you can get uh, a week off or sometimes even more uh, if you're lucky. Uh, if Golden Week, the first day of the ho is it, this first day of Golden Week is uh, Showa Day, which is a national holiday, and if that falls on a Friday, then you have the weekend off and then the other uh, uh, national holidays uh, in the next week. Uh, if you're lucky, you can get five days, seven days, or sometimes nine days off. And for your average Japanese person, seven days or nine days off is just amazing. Uh, unfortunately, this year, uh, Golden Week, the first day was uh, on Wednesday. Showa Day was on Wednesday this year, and most people had to work on Thursday and Friday, and then from tomorrow, you know, they'll enjoy uh, the rest of Golden Week. On Wednesday, on Showa Day, my wife and I and our daughter decided to go for a, a drive to get out of our house. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a fairly large place, but uh, my wife working every day from home, my working from home, and my daughter studying at home, we were getting a little bit of uh, cabin fever. So on Wednesday, we hopped in the car and drove up to the top of Mount Tsukuba, which is uh, maybe 90 minutes uh, northeast of Tokyo. Uh, we enjoyed the forest and the clean air and the mountain scenery and all that, and did some shopping at Costco and you know, glad to get back home after a long drive. Uh, I grew up driving a car in America since before I was the legal age to drive, so I really miss it. So uh, whenever I get a chance to go on a long drive here in Japan, I really enjoy it. But anyway, uh, let's, let's just say that uh, it's golden week, it's a very beautiful spring day, and it's a wonderful day to make a video about a camera. Uh, today's video is about a camera which I've, uh, I've had been sitting on the back burner for the last couple of years, which I've been meaning to work on but hadn't quite gotten around to it, and that is this Olympus Pen FT, which is a 35mm half frame interchangeable lens SLR camera. Uh, the Pen FT was, uh, I guess, 
uh, uh, what do we say, an evolution of the pin F, which was introduced in 1963. And the pin F was an evolution of the original uh, pin half frame camera invented by Yoshihisa Maitani in the 1950s. Uh, the original pin was a very popular camera in Japan and zillions of them were made and sold and the demand was strong enough that Olympus decided to produce a professional interchangeable lens camera for the half frame format. And so Mr. Maitani was uh, brought back to uh, brought back up to bat to uh, create this uh, new camera and he created something really really nice. Uh, the PIN uh, FT series was quite popular as a backup ca camera to 35mm photographers and a few photographers used it exclusively. It was quite small, compact, light, it was very rugged and reliable and it was produced with a large assortment of lenses which made it very flexible for a lot of situations. Uh, the standard lens was the one which is, which is fitted to this particular camera uh, which is a 38mm f1.8. Uh, the wide angle lens produced for this was a 20mm f5.6, if I remember correctly. A 25mm lens was produced. Um, the 38mm, I believe there were three different versions the 1.8, 2.8, and I think the pancake lens was an f3.5 38mm lens. I might be wrong. If anyone cares to correct me, please go ahead. And then a couple of 40mm lenses were developed, a uh, 40mm f1.4 lens, and then a 40mm f1.2 lens. Uh, a 60mm f1.5 lens, which is one of the, the rarest of the pin lenses. And then the short telephoto lenses, longer ones, um, uh, were also made. I think like uh, 135mm, 150mm, maybe 180mm. I'm, I'm not too familiar with the telephoto lenses, I don't usually shoot with those. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the features and functions of the pin FT starting at the top as usual. Uh, here we have the film rewind knob which doubles as the uh, release for the film door. Simply pull up on the knob or, and the film door opens. Uh, there is no flash shoe uh, made or no flash shoe built into the top of the pin F series. To mount a flash you have to use an accessory a flash shoe holder which slides onto the viewfinder bezel on the back. Uh, when you are shopping for one of these cameras, make sure that the bezel is intact. These are made out of plastic and a lot of people mount the flash shoe adapter on top and they sometimes they put it on in a clumsy way or they take it off in a clumsy way or they drop the camera with the adapter attached and it can break off this bezel which uh, kind of harms the resale value and makes it uh, impossible to mount a flash on one of these cameras. When you mount the flash with the flash adapter, you would plug it into the PC sync uh, connector on this side. On the other side here we have a film charge uh, indicator, we have the film counting uh, dial, and we have the shutter button with a hole here where you can fit a standard cable release. On the back here of course we have the viewfinder window and we have the uh, film winding and shutter charging lever. If it's an original black paint camera it will have a black chrome plated lever. On the front of the camera we have the shutter speed dial, we have the aperture ring, the focusing ring on the lens, and we have the self timer uh, uh, lever here. Uh, on the back of the lens here we have a couple of tabs here. We have a depth of field preview uh, button on this side and then this is the release uh, lever. To release the lens you push down and turn the lens clockwise and it comes off. Uh, the, the same system was used on the later Olympus OM cameras and there was an adapter made which allowed you to fit OM lenses to the uh, uh, pin F series which is quite interesting. You can see the half frame here and uh, the focusing screen located on the front. Uh, some weaknesses you have to be aware of in these pin cameras is uh, the beam splitting mirror since uh, and the, the mirror itself on the earlier pin F cameras. The, the coating on these is easily susceptible to fungus, uh, which eats away the chrome, uh, I guess the silvery on, on the mirror, and makes it very difficult to see through them. And it's especially a problem on the pin FT because it uses kind of a, uh, a mirror similar to a beam splitting mirror. And it makes it very difficult to look through the viewfinder in focus. For these cameras and this one, uh, the reason this one sat on the back burner for so long and why I didn't fix it is because it needed a new mirror. 
Replacing the mirror is not really a very difficult trick. What I use is I use mirrors from Olympus uh, OM40 cameras, which have pretty much zero value nowadays, and I can usually pick one up for about $10 or so. And I buy these cameras for two things. I buy them for the prisms, which I can use in the earlier OM and M1 cameras. They fit perfectly. And the mirror, the SLR mirror, uh, I can use and I can cut it to, uh, fit, this, to fit in these uh, pin FT cameras. And it works perfectly well. It allows you to uh, focus quite uh, uh, well on, on what you're focusing on and it allows you to see the light meter uh, uh, built into the uh, viewfinder. Uh, the FT compared to the earlier cameras features the built-in uh, uh, light meter and you adjust the film speed by uh, turning it to either 500 or just somewhere where the window is visible on the top and then pulling out. Uh, on the shutter speed lever and just turning it to, to the number uh, which matches whatever films uh, you have loaded inside the camera. The bottom of the camera here we have the battery chamber and this is meant to use uh, an MR9 battery but you can use a PX625 battery or you can even slip in uh, an LR44 battery. Uh, the interesting thing about the old Olympus rangefinder cameras is it there's, there's the spring on the bottom which uh, presses against the battery has a lot to play on it so it's quite easy just to slip in an LR44 SR44 battery without an adapter and then just push it back on or thread it back on and here we have the release lever which allows you to uh, uh, rewind the film and then standard uh, quarter inch tripod socket uh, let's see uh, loading the camera is quite simple we'll pull up on the rewind knob to open the film door uh, here you see the uh, shutter which is uh, made out of titanium and it's a rotary shutter which turns and it's quite reliable. Uh, Olympus uh, tested this and they guaranteed it to uh, be able to cycle for at least 100,000 times. Uh, loading the film on this is the same as any other 35 millimeter camera. You drop your film cartridge here, uh, stretch the film meter across uh, to the take up spool and then simply uh, uh, wind the film until the holes on the film engage the sprocket here and close the film door. If you're using a 36 exposure roll of film, you should be able to get about, uh, uh, it'll go, the counter will go up to about uh, 72, uh, so you get to two shots for every single uh, frame of 35 millimeter film. But in practice, I usually get 76 or 77 shots out of one of these cameras. Uh, the half frame format, you can get these developed uh, anywhere you would get uh, ordinary film developed. Uh, scanning is a little bit difficult. Um, you can get them scanned onto a CD and then you can just use your uh, uh, editing software. Uh, usually the built-in software is, is quite adequate for uh, 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 I guess cropping or cutting out the images from the and making files out of them. Uh, for myself I use uh, I like to use an Epson flatbed scanner with a standard 35 millimeter uh, uh, film holder and I can uh, use Epson's software to uh, I guess uh, select the half frame films uh, for scanning so it's not really so difficult. Uh, the lenses are quite amazing on these cameras. They provide really good results. And um, if you're using, like, say, 400 grain film or 200 grain film, you're going to get, you know, or speed film, you're going to get quite a lot of grain in the photos. If you're using uh, 50 or 100 speed film, you'll get minimum grain. Uh, shooting slides in these is a little bit difficult because uh, you can't really mount uh, half frame slides so easily. You can shoot slide film and just have it delivered to you. Uh, in the normal sheets, like uh, you would get uh, a 35 millimeter negative uh, scent, and then you could scan, um, I guess the positives are called, uh, uh, on your scanner. Uh, yeah, I, I really love shooting with these cameras. Uh, I plan to go out and take this one uh, shooting this week just to, to have a little bit of fun with it. I've got an old Pin W which just arrived and I, I, I hope to get that one uh, going as soon as I, I get this one, uh, use this one a little bit. I plan to have this one up for sale in my Etsy and eBay stores. Uh, my eBay store is open right now, but uh, shipping is a little bit slow, uh, mainly because the number of flights from uh, Japan to other countries is really limited. And instead of usual, taking the usual three to five days, it's taking uh, between two weeks and one month. So if you're interested in buying a camera and don't mind waiting a little bit of time for uh, shipping, uh, you, you know, feel, you know, go ahead and, and buy one, uh, please. So uh, hopefully we'll see more flights uh, or the flight schedule picking up in June or so. That seems to be the plan here in Japan anyway, or that's what the expectations are. So uh, hopefully things will, will get better before long. 
Anyway, I'm about 15 minutes in this video and I gotta get home and check on my daughter. Uh, she's supposed to be doing her homework now. I gotta go and check and make sure she's not watching Disney videos. Uh, I'll be posting more videos uh, in the near future, so if you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And if you have any requests or anything, uh, also feel free to leave them in, section, in the comment section below. Uh, thank you for watching. We hope to see you again soon.